Hi everyone, my name is Josh, and we are here, uh, we are the Nisliy 2018 and 19 uh, Russian Moldova program, and we're here today to talk to about, about character development. So we're first going to start off by introducing ourselves. My name's Josh, I'm from Plato, Texas, just north of Dallas. I'm 18 years old. I had the opportunity to study with Nisli Y two years ago here in Moldova in 2016. Um, and we've been living here in Chisinau for the past, how many months? Six. Six, six months. Hi, my name is Julia Powell. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm 19 years old. I studied with Nisli in Kirov, Russia two summers ago. Hi everyone. My name is Melissa Barrett. I'm from Canton, Massachusetts, and I'm 18, and this program is my first time learning Russian. Hi, I'm Simone Tricka. I'm also from Massachusetts, and this is also my first time learning Russian. All right, so I'm going to first start us off by talking about the buttons at the bottom. You see the Q&A and then the chat button. You can ask us questions in either box. Um, we will try, we will be looking through those throughout the webinar, so feel free to ask those while we're presenting, ask questions while we're presenting. Um, we'll get to them at some point throughout the webinar. Um, so yes, we want, we want you to ask questions. Uh, that'll make it more fun for us <laughs> instead of just sitting here, so. <laughs> All right, well, I think we can start now. Next slide, please. All right, so I'm gonna talk about independence and um, using your newfound independence on the Nisli Y program to help benefit your uh, study of Russian or whatever language you're using. So Nisli Y provides an, a unique opportunity for participants to learn uh, uh, important life skills while advancing their language skills. So one of the biggest things I've learned on my Nisli Y program is how to properly ride public transportation. I'm from Dallas. We don't have public transportation. We have we love our cars, and most of the U.S. I know does not have a decent public transit system. Um, well, here in Moldova, there's a decently reliable um, trolleybus network and marshutka network. So let me first explain marshutkas, because I know most of you are probably like, what is that? Um, a marshutka is, think of it as a cargo van you're, not, you're taught not to get into as a child but they somehow managed to shove 20 to 25 people in them. Um, and those go around the whole city. Um, and I know I use those on a daily basis because I live where the trolley bus network doesn't really get to. Um, so one of the biggest things with public transit, how I've used it to increase my language skills, I've had lots of, it, it's a great way to um, learn how to not be frazzled when you're um, like immediately um, bombarded with a question. I mean, on the trolley bus, the um, ticket, the ticket person, the conductor will ask you like how many tickets you want. Um, you might be at a bus stop and someone will ask you, do you know where this trolley bus is going? Or when's the next, for example, 22, uh, trolley bus 22 coming. So it's a great way to um, just an like learn to answer on the fly and um, not necessarily get frazzled and think of like think too much about your answer. Um, it's also a great way to ask for, learn how to ask for and explain directions. So I've had I've been at bus stops before, and people will ask me how to get to the central market from um, the other side of like, in the other side of the city. So I've been able to tell them that they can take a certain trolley bus to, um, the. Armenyaska Street stop and get off and they'll be at the um, Central Market. So um, that's a really great way to learn how to use, there's lots of verbs of motion in Russian. So it's a great way to practice your uses of verbs of motion um, and hopefully not um, get it wrong. <laughs> um, so another way um, I've been able to use my Russian is the simple like self-care tasks like, um, making appointments for say a haircut like i've had to um call the uh, barber shop and um speak to them and tell them that i'm running a few minutes late um please tell the barber that i'm going to be there at, like 10 minutes after my appointment and also um going to the store so 
story time. Um, I was making soup for some of my friends and host family, and I needed cilantro at the store. I had seen it earlier uh, back in the fall, and this was back in December, so I was not hopeful that I would find it because I know it's a seasonal thing here. Um, so I was able to go ask the, um, the store employee if they had cilantro. Of course, they told me no, but they were able to tell me where I could find dry cilantro, which worked well. Um, other things like, I also was able to buy um, meat at the like deli counter um, for this soup. And so that was a great practice of just general speaking and also um, how to use, like using specific cases since Russian is a case-based language. Um, I know, and then things like going to the pharmacy, I had a sore throat a couple months ago and I was able to go to the pharmacy and explain to them my symptoms and uh, the pharmacist recommended um, a certain medicine to me that I could take and it made my throat feel better. So that's a good thing. <laughs> um, and then one of the coolest things was there were several of us a couple weeks ago, we went to um, the optometrist and like the glasses store and we were able to do an eye exam in Russian and then go and pick out uh, the glasses we want. So that was a definite challenge for us because we like, it's not necessarily anything we would use on a daily basis, the vocabulary. So I mean, yes, there was some translation involved, but it was um, a great way to practice um, like certain specific vocabulary that is important that we wouldn't really have necessarily be able to use on a daily basis. And then one of the biggest things I think is financial literacy and discipline. So on the Nisli Y program, uh, everyone gets a stipend. Um, so learning how to have, a, learning how to make the stipend last over the whole semester. I know in high school, I was not the most financially disciplined person. I would spend my money however I wanted. Um, but here I've been able to learn to budget myself out and keep myself on a daily budget um, and just learn in like a low stress environment that isn't college where I could put myself into debt, um, how to manage my finances and make sure that I don't overspend um, on a, like a daily basis. So if you have any questions, you can ask them now or we can move on to Simone um, and she'll talk about Someone will introduce it. <laughs> Next slide. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about finding direction and how being on this Nestle Y program here in Moldova has helped me um, decide what direction I want to start moving in my life and um, where I want to see my, my future take me. Um, so first, I am still in high school and when I go back to school, I'll have a couple more years before I go off to college. And so soon um, now I need to start thinking about um, college and deciding where I wanna go and how I'm going to apply. And I think being on this program has definitely helped me decide um, what I'm looking for in a college, what I want to study, um, what my goals for college are, what I want to get out of that, which I think is really important to know when you are going into this um, big decision. Also, um, my fellow Nestle Y students here have been really, really great at um, giving me tips about college. Um, a lot of them, most of them, have already applied to college. A lot of them have already made their decisions. And um, it's been really great to hear what they have to say about this process. I know some people here have even been applying to colleges while they're on the program, which I think is crazy. I know it's a lot of work. But yes, they've had um, great advice for me. And yeah, I'll definitely find that helpful later on. Um, speaking of the future and goals, um, I've also found that being on this program has 
help me um, decide where I want my future career to go, what I want that to look like. Um, of course, I'm not completely decided, you know, I'm still keeping an open mind, but um, being on this program has helped me kind of see what fields I'm interested in, maybe what I'm not interested in. And it's sort of um, given me a taste of this field of um, like, you know, I, I always knew that I wanted to work internationally or, you know, something like that, but I didn't exactly know what opportunities were there. So, um, for example, I didn't um, know that there were these, um, I didn't know that there were so many international organizations out there. Um, and I have met people at so many different organizations doing such a variety, such an interesting variety of work. And um, I think now that that is something that I might be interested in doing. Um, and it, so it was really interesting to see, um, to meet people at um, cultural centers and exchange programs, all different sorts of things. Um, we've also had a lot of interesting opportunities to meet people who have careers that I think are really interesting. At the beginning of the program, um, we had a meeting with people from the American Embassy and I thought that was the coolest thing because um, they gave us some presentations about their jobs, about um, how they had gotten to that career. Um, some of them had always known that that's what they wanted to do. Some people had um, taken the test and not gotten in and taken it later. Some people um, had come to that career later in, their, later in their life. So it was really interesting to hear all their different stories about that. And then later on, we were able to ask them questions, um, which I just found so, so interesting. Um, I, I had said, you know, I would like to maybe go into the Foreign Service, but I didn't even know what exactly that meant. You know, they were able to tell me that, um, they were able to just tell us so much about how that system works and um, to tell us about the pros and cons of that career, what they like, um, what they don't, what's hard, what's fun. Um, so it was great to hear from them. And like I mentioned earlier, I have found so many um, amazing role models in the different organizations that we've met with. Um, yeah, we don't see the people from the embassy every week. They're not, you know, like a constant presence, but um, we definitely see them around. Um, for example, we had a Thanksgiving party um, with us, the Nestle Y students and some Moldovan students. Um, which was a lot of fun. And there were a couple people from the embassy there. And actually, while I was setting up for that, um, while I was making plans um, and helping to organize that party, we actually ran into somebody from the embassy. And when we explained what we were doing, that we were organizing a party, he said, um, oh, great, like, I have a football, because we, we were looking for decorations. And it's hard to find, like, real American Thanksgiving party decorations in Moldova, where Thanksgiving is not a holiday, at least American Thanksgiving is not a holiday. Um, so he was able to bring in like a real American football and we had that, I mean, we couldn't throw it around inside obviously, but it was so much fun to like have that, be able to tell people like, you know, this is something that we do on Thanksgiving, look, here's a football. So that was really great. It's, it's really amazing to like um, just run into these people, to be able to have like nice conversations with them. There's a lot you can learn from them. Um, so lastly, um, I am so, so excited to start, you know, moving towards these goals that I've sort of figured out for myself, um, about, you know, college, about a career, but I do have a couple more years, um, at home before I can start that. And at first I was really worried that I would be bored, um, that I wouldn't feel like challenged, um, especially, you know, with these big goals ahead of me. I didn't want to feel like I was just stuck, you know, that I was sitting there. And I don't, I think that I've found some ways um, of keeping up my Russian skills and of challenging myself at home that I didn't even know existed when I was at home before this program. Um, for example, I've talked to people back home and it seems like all of a sudden everybody knows a Russian. They're like, oh, come talk to my neighbor, come talk to my friend. People that I didn't know were there. I didn't know that there was such a big Russian community in my area. Um, and it's a little bit funny that I'm just finding that out now while I'm living thousands of miles away. Um, but it's really cool to know that that is there waiting for me at home. 
um, that there will be people for me to talk to. Um, in addition to that, there are some really interesting opportunities, volunteer opportunities um, that um, I could use my new Russian speaking skills with. For example, um, the food pantry in my hometown um, is looking for people who can speak different languages and um, will be able to speak with the customers there who might um, feel more comfortable talking in their native language. So when I get home, I'm really looking forward to trying to um, apply for that position and um, be able to use my Russian skills that way. Um, it's just amazing all the opportunities that have come up that I've found out about um, while I'm here. So yeah, I have big goals in the future, um, exciting things sooner. Yeah, it's going well. Thanks, Nasulai. All right, I'm going to pass the mic to Melissa. Um, she's going to talk about building relationships. Next slide, please. Thank you, Simone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I will be talking about some of the relationships that we have built here in Moldova. First is host families. We all live in host families, and host families here come in all different sizes, whether it's just one parent or two or children or older host parents or pets all all the sorts but they're all great in their own way and i came here to moldova knowing hello thank you and goodbye and so um, some of that initial language barrier can definitely be tough but we've really worked through it an example of that being in about i'd say october i was taking a taxi and my host mom called and in russian she said she said, when are you gonna be home? I, I have dinner, I'm waiting for you. And the Russian words for Friday and 15 are very similar, or I still think they are. And I said, I'll be home in Friday minutes in Russian. And she said, I don't understand. I said, I'll be home in Friday minutes. And the taxi driver was laughing and I still didn't get it. And finally she figured out when, when I came home 15 minutes later. Um, and, uh, next, I also want to talk about being part of a family. The families provide such a great opportunity to learn about local culture. With my host mom, we've gone to cooking classes. We did salsa dancing lessons together. We bake cookies. And in this top picture here, you'll see my host family at our dacha, which is a summer home. And that's my host grandmother, myself, my host mom, and my host grandfather. We were there that day picking pears so we could make jams for the winter. And that was really fun. And it really made me feel like I was part of a family here because it is tough being home, not away from home, excuse me, for nine months. And next, uh, Russian language teachers. They have a different style of teaching here, which at first was a little bit tough. Our teacher, Simone High's teacher will tell you, you have a problem in front of the whole class. Your accent's bad, you need to fix it. Or listen, Melissa, you, uh, the test didn't go well this week. You need to start trying harder. And that can be a little harsh and that's not usually the typical American style, especially in front of the whole class, but they all really mean well. And uh, we also have very small class sizes. I went to a public school and recently graduated and I had, I'd say most of my classes were you know, 25 to 30 people. And here we're in classes of five or six. So it makes it that everyone has to participate. Everyone has to have their homework done. And we're able to really personalize the class to how we're moving. If you know, we're learning a lot, we move faster. We also, you'll see the picture at the bottom. That's my class uh, at a theater performance. And our teachers got to come along with us and they spent a whole class period telling us what we were about to see and how it meant, what it meant and what it meant for their culture and gave it an explanation that really helped us understand what we were actually going to see. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about other NISLI students, which may seem like an obvious one, but I previously studied abroad for a summer, not with NISLI, and I was about an hour and a half, two hours from the next American student. But here we're all in Chisinau together. So we do activities like we go to museums, we go to theaters. We had a recent trip to a banya, which is a sauna. It was a lot of fun. And we talked to local business owners. 
and even when we don't have scheduled group events we go out and see different festivals and explore the parks and try new restaurants and that's been a really fun and enlightening way to see the city that i think would have been hard to do on my own so without further ado i'm going to pass the mic off to julia next slide please hi everyone um First, just let me apologize in case I accidentally repeat anything that was said by the other students. I've been looking at the questions, which are all great, so keep them coming, please. So since we wanted to, since the theme of this webinar is character development and personal growth, I thought it would be good to talk about some challenges, both presented by the program and challenges you can present to yourself to be even more successful on this program. Okay, so some personal challenges. Obviously, a nine-month study abroad program um, will present challenges to you. Um, one, as already spoken to by a lot of students, is how we have a lot more freedom. We basically can go anywhere within the city limits of Chisinau whenever we want, as long as we're in classes, out of the group activities, and back to our host house by 10 p.m. And like um, Josh mentioned, Chisinau has a very good public transportation system, and it's not a super big city. And so there's a lot of freedom to do what you want. And so that can, that's great, but it can also be a challenge. A uh, second challenge is host family and immersion in local life. Obviously, one of the great benefits of the Nisley program is being immersed in your host country. But again, of course, this can also be a challenge, um, especially when you first arrive, because it's always hard to adjust at the beginning and especially to adjust to a completely new family. And also, I think almost 75% of the host family, 75% of the students received incorrect information about their host families. And so when we got here and we found out that, oh, the Josh's host cat was been dead cat, for two years. My cat's been dead <laughs> for two years. Um, just like family members that weren't disclosed were living in the house and other things like that. Um, so everything's a little bit of an adjustment, but it you work through it. Again, cultural adjustment and living abroad is presented by the program as a challenge. But this is just something you, you live through, you adjust through, and while it is a challenge, I mean, we all are here together and we all support each other through this. And homesickness, of course, is a challenge that everyone experiences to some degree at some point, some more than others. But again, this is just one of those things where um, once you get through it, you just come out stronger. And it's one of these things about um, like becoming an adult and living away from home and, and such. Now, challenges that you can pose to yourself. Like how I was saying with how we have greater freedom, we also have a lot more free time. I have so much more free time than I had in high school because I was in class. I would leave my house at like 6.45, wouldn't get back to like 7 p.m. Here we have four hours of classes a day and then occasionally group lunch together and then two or three times a week a group activity. But then other than that, we have free time. And so it is easy to just retreat into your room at your host house or not be extraordinarily productive because again, sometimes it can be hard to push yourself to go the next level and immerse yourself in life here just because it's exhausting sometimes. Um, the language barrier, especially for those who are not as confident with their Russian or came with less Russian, this was really challenging at the beginning. But um, once you make a full and busy life for yourself, life here improves a lot. Um, for example, I try, I do a lot of reading. I, a lot of us have joined gyms and so we yes. um, stay healthy and happy that way. And a lot of us also, a lot of people are doing different clubs and different classes. And so it's definitely possible, but it is a challenge at the beginning that is kind of hard to overcome in the first few weeks. A second challenge that you can pose to yourself is making effective use of your time. Again, having lots of time on your hands. Um, what I mean by this is doing your homework um, at reasonable hours <laughs> and getting enough sleep every night. I think I've done a great job of this. I, something I love about this gap year is that I'm getting so much more sleep than I ever got in high school. Um, and so I'm pretty pleased with how I've been balancing this, but making effective use of your time is definitely something that you can be doing. Another, another challenge you can pose to yourself is seeing and experiencing everything that Kishinau has to offer. We do have a good amount of group activities, but um, not enough so that you, you can always do more. And there's so much, there is a good amount to see and do here in Kishinau, even though it is a small city. So again, seeing and experiencing, 
challenging yourself to, so for example, I challenge myself to go to a new restaurant every week because we do do independent lunches and to also go to a new place every week inside Chisinau. And I've found lots of nice places through this and it's nice to get out and explore sometimes by yourself, sometimes with others. And that's a great way to make great use of your time and to fill up your time so you're not just not doing anything. And then another thing that you can do is try new activities. So again, so with the more time you have, free time you have on this program, this gives you opportunities to do things you would not have had time to do in high school in the States. And so photo one here is me doing um, my weekly cooking class. Melissa, not, Melissa, I, and another um, Nestle participant, once a week, we are required extracurricular program activity is a wonderful cooking class that um, we are so happy got organized for us. We go to the apartment of a retired cook and we sit there for three, four hours, um, write down recipes and help like cook Moldovan food with her. And it's great because it's all in Russian. We get to practice a whole lot of Russian and we get to learn more about Moldovan culture through cooking. And that's me. We made plachinta one day, which is my, 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 my favorite Moldovan food. That's why I look so happy in the photo. Um, yeah, I love my extracurricular class. And a lot of other people have found other great extracurricular classes that they love. I know three or four, Simone, you do sewing. Yeah. Um, sewing classes are, some have really enjoyed that. Um, personal trainer sessions at the gym is also popular. So there's a lot that you can do here. And next slide, please. Now, academic challenges. So some of the challenges presented by the program in terms of academics is you're going from multiple subjects in high school to just one subject. And four hours a day of the same subject, no matter how much you love Russian, can get um, exhausting at times. And so staying focused and engaged throughout the nine months can sometimes be a challenge because it's natural to go in, um, to have depth, like to go through ruts with the Russian language, especially considering it is a difficult language. And so again, staying focused and engaged can be a challenge, but we're all here with the same goals. And so I have found it hasn't been an issue um, for the most part, but. Another way the program challenges us academically is in the first semester, we were all required to complete something called the ideas projects. These projects were, there were three of them. Each one, each has a separate theme. The first one was places. The second one was things. And the third one was people. And basically it's an independent research project where you have to give a presentation in Russian to the entire group. And so for my first um, ideas project for places, I did the central cathedral in Kishnaun. and I gave a seven minute in Russian presentation on this cathedral. And as the idea projects go on and you have spent more time in your, in Moldova speaking Russian, um, you're, these are supposed to get more, there's increase in difficulty in terms of your language use. And so that's a great way to pick something that you're interested in and to learn more about Moldova. Again, the final academic challenge I would say that is presented by the program is the intensive nature of this. I mean, we have four hours, we do not have a great deal of homework. Um, my, I usually spend less well, than an hour of homework each night. Um, and it's the Nisli, I did the Nisli um, summer program in Russia. And I find that the academic year program is a lot less academically intensive because um, something that they told us in DC at the beginning of the year was the academic year program is a marathon, whereas the summer is a sprint, which makes a whole lot of sense. And so while classes, we, um, we make good progress in the classes and we learn a lot, but there's also a lot of time to study. And so I think there's a, I think the program does a good job of balancing this. And so I'm, I'm pleased with the level of intensity of the class I'm in, Josh and I are in group three. Yes. And then some academic challenges that you can pose to yourself. So something that our group decided to do in the second semester was we instilled a language pledge saying that we would speak Russian amongst ourselves during the 10 minute breaks we have in between classes and during the group lunches we have together three times a week. And I think that's been going pretty good. Um, we do this with the goal of having like Russian just coming more naturally and to engage each other more in Russian. And I think it has benefited the group as a whole. Another challenge you can pose to yourself in terms of Russian academics is pursuing Russian outside of the classroom. Again, all that free time we have, that is time you could be spending studying Russian. And so 
you can read in Russian, watch movies, and listen to music in Russian. It can be tempting um, after four hours of Russian uh, in the classroom every day. And our teachers, well, group three, our teachers yeah. do not speak English. No. And so we only, um, from day one, it was only in Russian. And then having to engage and interact with host families, and then um, maybe a random stranger on the street like asked you a question and first it was in Romanian and then it was in Russian and you're tired from that experience. It can be tempting to just retreat into the world of English. But um, obviously you should challenge yourself to not do that. So something that I try to challenge myself to do, I really love to read. And so if I'm reading 30 pages of English, I need to compensate that with at least 15 pages of Russian. And right now I am reading Harry Potter in Russian and it's going pretty good. And so that's actually really good. And I'm enjoying it. So um, it's not a chore for me. So that's great. And then a final academic challenge posed by the program is in the second semester, we are each required to take at least one class at a local high school in addition to the classes we are already taking at the university. These are called the Pushkin Lyceum classes. Now, um, you can challenge yourself to take more than one class. I am in gym class and that meets twice a week, so I did not make this decision to take another class. Um, but this is a good way to challenge yourself. Gym class is good because there is more speaking Russian and interacting in Russian with the students than um, perhaps say a more traditional lecture base where you're just really hearing Russian and not really speaking it. So you can challenge yourself with the Pushkin Lyceum classes to get more Russian every week. All right. Well, I think that wraps up our presentation portion. So we're gonna go into the Q&A session. So I know there are some questions that have not been answered currently. We were mainly saving those until this uh, Q&A portion. So one of the things is, what kind of challenges have you experienced living in your host family? Um, do we wanna? I know one of my biggest challenges living in my host family, I, I have to often communicate with my host family because I live out in the um, far southern section of the city. Um, and getting, getting out to my house, it, it takes a while from the center of the city. Um, for me to get home, it takes at least 45 minutes. So I usually have to, like if I have things going on earlier, like going on it, um, later in the evening, I have to make sure that I talk to my host mother beforehand because she usually likes me home around 7.15. So I have to explain to her what I'm doing that, that day. And it would, um, I know like the second or third week, she got kind of mad at me because I came home at like 8 p.m. one day and she was not happy that she had to reheat uh, dinner for me. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess we'll just go down and say like a major challenge that we've each experienced with the host family. And so um, this person in regarding the question, they give the example like from keeping doors closed to eating the big meal of the day with their host, with their whole family. Um, so something I suppose I'll talk about, well each host family is different. And, but I will say that a lot of the challenges and struggles each individual student has had with their host family does kind of have a general trend of, re of other participants having the same kind of general um, issue. And so while we can't like speak for every student, there is kind of like a general kind of um, vibe, if I can say. Something that is really challenging about my host family is that um, uh, for me personally, um, not everyone in my host family speaks Russian. And so I hear a lot of Romanian, which is extraordinarily frustrating. And furthermore, my host family does not do things together as a host family. They do not eat dinner together. They don't eat meals together um, just because of the way the family's made up and everyone's schedule. And my host mother is always working, which is fine. Um, we, the, the family environment is not quite a family environment. And so that was a bit challenging because I, um, sometimes wish I could get more Russian interaction with the host family. And I know more students, some students get less than I do, some students get more. And it's just a difference of host families, which is natural. Can you talk about how, how you resolve the challenge? Oh, how we, um, how we resolve the challenge? Okay, um, well, one way that I have tried to engage more with my host family is that we have, I 
again, like with my host family makeup, um, we have like a live-in kind of like nanny whose job is to watch my host brother all the time. And she gets bored. And so I will go down and talk to her in Russian. And that's really fun. Um, her somehow all are so so I get several good conversations with her every week that will be like 30, 45 minutes long. She loves to talk to me about like these things that happen in her life. Um, I feel like almost every one of our conversations ends with the same advice that I should not get married young and that I should finish university <laughs> and that men in general are just terrible. So <laughs> I really enjoy my conversations with Nina. We have a lot to talk about, but um, talking with her has actually given me a lot of information about uh, she doesn't live in Quiche now. She lives with my host family during the week and then goes back to her village for the weekends. And so I've learned a lot more about mall living village life than that. That's something I would not have been exposed to without talking to Nina, which is cool. Okay, one other question. There is a question about um, schooling. So as we talked about, we have- Wait, oh, we should, is that, listen, is it, so, okay. so, so um, we, we do have our classes at a local um, university in Chisinau. It is just the group of us Americans. Um, we're split up into three different classes based on um, level. I know that was one of the questions. So there's um, a group that had uh, no knowledge coming into the program, um, and that's uh, group one. Group two had um, some knowledge, um, most of them had had some like either a Russian summer camp of some sort or um, some uh, high school experience in Russian and then the third group um, most of us have done Nisli Y um, in previous years and do have um, more experience in Russian um, going on to um, what the Moldovan schools look like so we're only there most of us are only there uh, once or twice a week. So it is a good way to make friends. Um, we, we, can talk, we do talk with, um, I mean, I'm in PE, so I, I do get to talk with um, most of my classmates. There are, uh, I know it's where it's harder to talk with um, the kids in the class, but. All right. Do you want to? Yeah, which yeah. one? Let's talk about our weekends. Oh, great. Okay, that would be good. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Do you want to? I guess I, guess I, can, I can share. share. <laughs> we had a question about weekends and how we typically spend them. And I have to say, every weekend for me is a little bit different. When it's the first few months, you know, the weather was nice. We almost every weekend took a trip as a group outside the city to see other parts of Moldova which were really fun. We saw a lot of monasteries and a lot of different villages and such. Um, and more recently, we've been going to theater performances on the weekend. We had a few weekends that were free and I went to my friend's host family's house and we baked cookies with her. And then we did that back at my host house as well. But we have mandatory events sometimes on the weekends and sometimes our weekends are completely free, but all of the events are fun. We just recently went to a small business owner, American business owner here and talked about having a business in Moldova and how that is, what that is like. And that was really, yeah, really interesting. Um, there's also a lot of shows, um, a lot of music performances, ballets, operas, um, this stuff is pretty easy to find and it's pretty easy to buy tickets as well and tickets are super cheap i go to the ballet or to operas um pretty often there's like a group of us who are into that sort of thing um and tickets are always less than five dollars i generally pay about 250 for a ticket to a ballet so i've definitely been taking advantage of like the the low prices for shows like that it's been pretty fun um yeah. Um, so I like this question here. Um, from, um, so I really like this question that Kathy um, asked. Are the host family stricter with girls about hours and what activities the girls can do via some more freedom for boys? Um, just I'll talk about this first, I guess. I, my host family, personally not my host family, um, at the very beginning of the program, something that they like to say to me was, we are a very democratic family. <laughs> 
Um, still not exactly sure what that means. But um, my host family, this is really totally not an issue for me at all, um, which I'm really thankful for. But Moldova is definitely a country where there are definitely different expectations for girls and boys. Um, for example, like this week at gym class, we did like, we ran like four laps, like did some like high knees and butt kicks. And then the boys were told to go do pull-ups and us girls were instructed to go lie down on the mats for five minutes. I was like, seriously. <laughs> um, just like little things like that where um, girls are definitely perceived to be physically weaker here. And that does, and so you will get comments from random local people about that slash um, random local people will have different expectations for what you can and cannot do if you are a girl compared to what you can and can't do if you're a boy. Um, but in terms of freedom, I mean, girls walk around the city all the time. Um, it's, for my host family, it's not an issue. Um, Melissa and Simone, do you wanna talk about that? Yes, it hasn't been an issue for me. I was told if I wanted to go running in the park, I would have to bring a male Nisley student with me, but nothing like, we go, come home at the same times. They tell us to be cautious, but, it hasn't really restricted us, I would say. Yeah, I think as far as school goes, and it really just depends on the family and their um, individual situation and less on the, the gender of the student, I would say. Um, yeah, some host families care more than others, whether you're home for dinner every night. Some people have dinner later than others. So, yeah, that's mostly the determining factor, I think. All right, next question. Let's talk about how we can make friends with local youth. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there is a, a um, large, there are several large organizations in the area, um, like the Access Program, which is um, a micro scholarship. Uh, I think it's through the Department of State. And they have um, English classes. Uh, here in Chisinau and across Moldova. So we've had the opportunity to volunteer with some AXIS alumni in um, the nor in a northern town called Ungeni. Um And that was really fun. We got to make some friends there. Um, lots of making our making friends is up to just it's it's up to you yourself. Um, you have to put yourself it, it's you have to be able to put yourself out there. Um, people are definitely curious about what we're doing here in Moldova. I know there are people that have asked about Romanian usage. Um, most everyone here in Chisinau speaks Russian. Um, you might get a comment about speaking Russian. Um, there are some people that prefer Romanian. Um, when we when we do get asked what we're doing here in Chisinau and we do tell them that we are studying Russian, they'll, they, they are very curious. And then um, lots of times they'll ask us, you should tell us, um, you should also study Romanian too. It's a good, cool language. So that's interest, one of the interesting things. Um, but there is a fair amount of opportunity to make friends. There's also, um, a program where Moldovan students and um, former and students from across the former Soviet Union, um, they go to the United States uh, called Flex, and there's a um, large alumni base here in Moldova. So we have been able to meet with them. We've had how many parties? Two, three, 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 three no, parties. No, only two where they could come. Two parties. Um, the third was our yes. party. <laughs> uh, we had the Thanksgiving party and the Halloween party. party. And um, there was a large number of Flex alumni and AXIS um, participants and alumni that uh, came. And that was a really uh, cool way to make uh, friends. And I know there are some people that have. I will say I that, that, that too. Sure. Unless you. Yeah. Oh, I would just say that um, although there are opportunities to make um, friends with local people, um, not a lot of Nisley students have close friendships with any um, Moldovan yeah. students. Outs yeah. Um, I found that the best way to make friends here um, is really just to put yourself out there. Um, the, the organized events are great, um, but I haven't really made any close friends there. 
Um, I think really just um, if you meet somebody that you want to spend more time with, definitely get their contact information, definitely follow up. People are generally um, happy to, you know, meet up at some other time. Um, so, yeah. We have a question here about internet access in class at home and out and about. Okay. Oh, we did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay um, Rita asked, are people my friends? I'm sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, I will, for the question about if people are friendly, I would say that the people of Moldova are very friendly and um, are, like, for the most part, basically always, like, willing to help you. Um, and in terms of Russian versus Romanian, if someone does come up to you and says something in Romanian, they will almost always be willing to speak to you in Russian, um, especially as they realize quickly that you are not Moldovan and you yes. are a foreigner. <laughs> um, it's, so it's not the same, it's not a political statement when you open your mouth and speak Russian here. It's, it's usually- If you're a foreigner. Yeah, when they figure out that you're, it, it's pretty obvious that we're foreign. Um, and when we, we do, when they do initially realize that we don't speak Romanian, um, they're usually very interested in what we're doing here because they can usually figure out that we're from either, the, the first thought is usually America. So um, it's a great way to start a conversation with them. Um, I mean, yes, they u usually do want to speak English to us, but um, we can usually like speak Russian with them. Um, I know I've had some of those conversations at the gym with people. Um, so let's see. Okay. Um, so we have a question about what has been the most difficult thing and also the easiest. So I think we can just go through this one by one. I think we should all talk about this. So I think the biggest, most difficult thing for me was trying to get used, used to having more free time. Cause I know after, like during, um, after, when did we stop doing like weekly excursions out of the city? It was, November. it was around November. Um, after November, I got very bored, um, like on the weekends. So, I had to find a way to um, find a way to use my time on the weekends in a more productive manner than just like going to a cafe. Oh, by the um, way, the reason we stopped the out of city excursion because it gets too cold and it does too get, icy. It does get pretty cold. So that's um, why we did less things on the weekends as a group. I mean, yes, we did have excursions within the city, but those were only like for two to th two to three hours. Um, so we did still have time like afterwards to do things. So um, on the weekends, I would usually go and like go to a place and um, find something new. I know that's when I did most of my winter shopping. Um, I tried to, I, I brought some winter things here to Moldova, but I did buy my, some major things like boots and um, like a winter jacket here. So I was able to um, do that on the weekends and also it's a great time to um, talk with your host family. I know I had some, uh, I, I would stay home and have some great conversations with my host family over those weekends. Okay, um, the most difficult thing and also the easiest. I think for me one of the easiest things was I did not really have any culture shock. Um, I think that's because I did the summer in Russia. And so the, in terms of, I did not really notice a whole lot of difference in terms of that would be enough to for me to have a huge culture shock experience um the most difficult thing i think um this is a hard one i would definitely say one of the more difficult things is challenging yourself to um go in above and beyond in terms of um the russian because there is more time where you could be um you have more time to be engaging with the language than is required and you get out as much as you put in. And so you can really, um, and so sometimes I have struggled with challenging myself to um, go above and beyond with the Russian studies. For me, I would say the most difficult thing was coming here with no Russian experience. Moldova surprisingly is not a country with a lot of tourism. And so you really do need Russian or Romanian to get by here and like I would 
I wouldn't go to things after class. Like, we, you know, we will go shopping to cafes. I wouldn't go because I wouldn't know how to get home and I wouldn't know how to ask. Um, and so that was really hard and isolating at first, but I've now found my way. And <laughs> there's some great apps in English or Russian that uh, <laughs> lead you home. And um, easiest thing for me, um, I'm not sure. I think, I don't know, I think coming here was a lot of fun. I think I adjusted quickly to living with my host family and I'd previously lived with the host family before and uh, they're a lot of fun. And so I, while I did have some free time, whenever I didn't, they were sure to keep me very busy with different activities. And I've more recently discovered that here Facebook is very popular for posting events. And it provides a really great resource for if we don't have a group activity one weekend, we look and see what's going on in the city. There's been like free book tours, there's been uh, festivals, there's a expo center and they did businesses in Moldova. And all of those have been a lot of fun and worthwhile. Mm -hmm. I want to bounce off of that and say that our uh, language teachers are also a great resource. I know um, one of our, Julie, uh, Julie and I's teachers, she has told us about several events in the city that are going on, and it's been really cool to go, uh, We, I mean, like the Made in Moldova Expo, and then also this um, interesting Christmas like market they were having at the Expo Center. I also have to give a shout out to our amazing local coordinator, Marina. She does a great yes, job. She of, yeah, does an space. amazing job. Like, we all I love mean, Marina. Um, she does a great job of finding stuff for us to do as a group and also individually, if we so wish. And she also is great at, she's lived in Kishinev her whole life, so she's great at um, helping us to find things that we are interested in in the city because that was a bit of a challenge for some students at the beginning of the program like some people were like oh I'm really interested in doing jujitsu but how do I find a jujitsu class here and Marina was able to help them and so that's great but yeah definitely thinking back on what um, Melissa said about Facebook being the way to find things yes. if you try to go to a like the opera's website you will not find anything you have to Facebook is definitely the way to go um, I think for me, um, one of the hardest things has actually been um, that when somebody asks me a question and I can't answer them right away, I got really, I would get really flustered. Um, so I think um, I am learning how to slow down and really think through what I'm saying, especially because um, I am, I'm still learning the language and um, making a good, clear sentence does take some thought. Um, so I think I'm getting better at um, having um, having conversations when um, I don't know all the words. I think I'm getting better at like, like slowing down, really like thinking through what I'm saying um, when I'm speaking to somebody in English and in Russian, mostly in Russian. Um, so I think that's been um, really helpful. It was hard at first. It's getting better. Um, I think the easiest thing for me was actually finding, finding, um, places to, um, places to spend my time after school, um, and finding friends in the city, um, which I didn't expect it to be as easy as it was for me. Um, but for example, I, um, with the help of Marina and a list of places that, um, former Nestle Y students had done extracurriculars, I found a really, really great sewing studio and the teacher there is amazing. She's, um, she explains things really clearly to us. She's very patient. She's very funny. Um, and I spend a lot of my time there. Um, again, like finding shows has been easier than I thought. Um, and finding all sorts of um, other activities to participate in has been um, fun for me and simpler than I thought it would be. Facebook is very helpful. Okay, we're going to talk about some of the, the, a little bit about the application process and some tips. So the application process, um, the application usually opens towards the end of August to the beginning of September. Um, and the application includes uh, several short, sh uh, short essays um, and then a host family introduction letter. Um, the, the, the essay topics, um, most of them, there's a few of them that change every year, um, but they're usually used to gauge um, like your your character and um, 
how your drive to study, your the, drive language. To study the language and things like that. Um, one of my biggest tips would probably be start your essays early, um, write a draft of them and then put them away for a little bit because I know when, I mean, when I was applying for college, this also helped. Um, you, your first like instinct for an essay is never, is usually never going to be like the best like draft of said essay. So I think it's, um, a great thing to just put it aside for a little bit, wait like a week or two, and you you will have some um, new thoughts that come to you, like come to your mind and will help you uh, add some depth to your essays. Um, my biggest advice would be, well, first I would say that there um, is a wonderful Facebook um, group called Ask Nisley Alumni, and there's been a lot of questions asked and answered many times in like in the history of that group. And so that is like language specific. And so um, that's always a good place to go look for um, answers to any like specific questions you might have. Because if, you've, if you're wondering it, someone else has probably wondered it and asked it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna jump in there quickly. Um, there was a link just sent to the Nisley Y uh, website. You can find some more detailed information about what we're talking about. And I think there is a um, mock application, like a path application a copy on there so you can see it sort of what it looks like mm -hmm. and my biggest advice for the application itself would be to be honest on your application and um miss lee is i think miss lee is really looking for um, people who are really interested in learning their language or will have the drive to like you know to complete this kind of program because this kind of program is obviously not um like a walk in the park it's a lot of physical and emotional work and so you need to be able to show in your essays that you are mature, confident, independent, and that you are truly interested and would make the best of this opportunity. Because for everyone who gets the scholarship, others are declined. And so it's really integral to the Nisley program that the kids who are selected are really interested in the language that they are learning. Yes, my advice would be similar to Julia's. I would say there's always the question, why Nisley, why the language that you've chosen and I would say definitely spend a lot of time thinking about it because we're here for the full year we're studying every week it's a lot of work we have a lot of fun but it's a <laughs> lot of work so if you're not really passionate about the language then it's gonna be a lot hard and it's harder and it's not gonna be as fun as people who are enjoying it yeah um I have an interesting anecdote about um, my application essays I um wrote my essays. I was pretty proud of them. I was pretty happy with the way that they were. The time came to turn them in and I realized that all of my essays were, I believe, 250 words instead of 150 the day before it was, two days before it was due. So I had to go through and take out like half of it, almost half of it. And um, I wouldn't suggest doing that. Please don't. <laughs> um, but what I would suggest doing is really narrowing down um, what you want to get across like really, like Melissa said, think really hard about um, what you want to get across about yourself and why you want to um, do this program. Um, really boil it down to a few main points and then um, write those down. Yeah. All right, and I think we can in, uh, wrap this up on any uh, with some like advice for future Nisley Y Russian students. But I'm going to start off. Uh, by saying just savor your time here like th there's not many times in your life where you're going to get to be able to tra travel to a new country and immerse yourself in a brand new culture so I would take full advantage of that and just try and immerse yourself as much as you can go to as many activities um, find as many events go to the theater go to the opera and things like that um Oh, okay, I didn't realize we were going to be doing this. Um, Sorry. Um, it's okay. Uh, I think my advice to future um, academic program participants, um, something that I feel like I've definitely allowed myself with this gap year, um, is to be kind to yourself and um, to let you, to, like, you know, give yourself some of the freedom and what your body wants. Like, I get a lot of sleep here. Um, I do a lot of things by myself independently because I really enjoy spending time by myself. And so doing things that make you happy, I think are really important. And um, at the end of the day, like, well, 
if this is your gap, it's a year in your life, no matter what year it is. And it's a year you're never going to get back. And you don't want to look back on that year and have regrets about um, not doing enough things that made you happy. And so I would definitely say if that means, you know, reading that book in English or <laughs> um, not spending the evening with your host family every once in a while and, you know, taking some, doing a face masks and um, maybe neglecting some extra studying and do that because I have, and it's been great. <laughs> Going off of that, I would say take the summer course seriously. It's necessary to uh, start the year off with some language and have a good start. And like Julia said, it's definitely important to have time for yourself, but it can be hard over the year to sometimes just like put the Russian aside for a second. But this is our one year to really practice and be with native speakers. So even though like, you know, you can be tired a day and you should definitely take some days for yourself, it's important to keep studying and keep looking over your notes and improving. Yeah, so you're last. So I got to give some really good words of wisdom. Um, <laughs> um, I think my advice for anybody on the program um, next year would be to really um, put yourself out there to try and go as many places as possible, um, like Josh was talking about, and to meet as many new people as possible. It's definitely... Um, it's hard to meet like a bunch of new people, especially when you don't have a common native language and it it's exhausting. Um, but I found that it's definitely worth it. The people that I have met here have all had really, really interesting things to say. So whether that's like going to um, an event, going to like some sort of um, group meeting or a club or an extracurricular, um, following up with people that you meet at, at these events. Um, or even just like talking to your teachers. Our teachers always have the most interesting anecdotes to share with us. Um, and I've, I've learned a lot um, from what they've had to say. <laughs> um, they always have interesting advice and stories for us. I think just listening to the people around you and really trying to meet as many people as you can. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I just realized I was on mute. I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, thank you for asking so many great questions to us. Uh, it's been, we're having a great time here and uh, we just want to wish the best of luck to those of you that are in the Nisley Y, in the Nisley -Y process. Um, I know uh, finalist results are supposed to be um, coming out soon. And I do want to say, as someone who has been declined in the past, don't let this moment define you if you do get declined. Um, use, use this to find yourself. I know after um, I was declined by Nisley Y several years ago, um, I was really able to find uh, my true passion, which was Russian. Um, and it was a great way to, it was a great way to find who I was. Well, I think that's the end of our our webinar. Thank yes, you. thank you yeah, all for thank tuning you all in. for coming and tuning in.